something really funky now. Uh, we're going to introduce um, Jens Stober, who is a uh, fellow researcher at GLAB. Um, he is, uh, he uh, twisted his ankle, broke his foot, something like that in, during the week, so he wasn't able to, to come down as planned. But he is sitting patiently at, on his, uh, at his desk with Skype on. So we'll play a video presentation that he put together for us since he broke his or twisted his ankle. Um, so we'll play that video, and uh, and then he'll be he's, he'll be available for live Q and A over Skype after his uh, presentation. That sound good? Yes. Sir. Okay. Right. Let's press go. This is Jens calling from Germany. Yeah, you see, it's dark outside. So, for me, it's deeply in the night, but I'm online for you. Unfortunately, I cannot be in Australia because of an injury, but I want to share with you my talk. So please, enjoy. <laughs> Hello, I'm glad to be here to speak to you for the Games for Change Festival Australia New Zealand. I'm presenting you now Frontiers and 1378 kilometers. These are both games that handle about the topic of immigration. And the talk is titled with Behind the Games, and I will start with a short introduction of myself. I'm Jens Dover. I studied media art at the University of Arts and Design in Karlsruhe. I co-founded there the Game Lab Karlsruhe. It was one of the first game labs at an art university on the world. Nowadays I'm at the RMIT University's G Lab Europe that is also dedicated to Karlsruhe and I'm glad to be here. So let's start the talk. Imagine you're a refugee. And as a refugee, you want to go to, let's say, Europe. Europe is a nice country and a lot of refugees from the African continent want to go. But it's not that easy to receive this treasure chest. So, why? Because there are guards. And these guards have guns. And with the guns, they're protecting the border. So, it's not easy for you to get there. And this is all you representing in a very characteristic way what it is about in the European at the European border. So because of this, Gold Extra and Aust Austrian artist group and me decided to create a game that is called Frontiers. Frontiers with the subtitle Welcome to Fortress Europe leads you towards the borders of Europe. It is a 3D online computer game. You can play it with 16 people at the same time. There are two teams, refugees and border guards, and it's based on Half-Life 2. It's a modification of this famous first-person shooter. Before creating the game, there was a big research. We've done a lot of interviews, photos and videos that were directly transferred into the game. In-game there are also some specialties, like the in-game human rights index. You can find it on the left corner of the screen. This stuff is representing the human rights index. If you shoot somebody into the game, in the game, this stuff turns into red. And if it's red, the border guards team will lose a lot of points and at the end also lose the game. But let's have a look at research and what routes we are focused on. There are two major migration routes to Europe. One is from the African continent, as I mentioned, and the other is from, from Iraq, Turkey, or Ukraine. So we focused on getting the migration route from the African continent into the game. So there are several kind of scenarios called maps that it handle uh, in the, the Sahara, in the desert, at the 
Marroquin border at the Spanish coast. And the aim for most refugees is to get into Rotterdam. And there's also a level in the Rotterdam container harbor. And the aim for the refugees is to find a container that leads them to London. London in the United Kingdom is, is the main goal of this migration route. But back to the game. It is, like I mentioned, produced by Gold Extra, that's an art, Austrian artist group that I'm, that I'm self part of. The game itself is supported by cultural and art institutions around the world, so it was shown in many museums. It also works in kind of art, and, uh, but also works at your, at your PC at home. So it's, and it's supported by human rights organizations like Amnesty International or Borderline Europe. Okay, this was just a short view to, to Frontiers. Let's have a look at another game that I've, that I've made. It's called 1378 kilometers. And this game hands about the inner German border situation in the year 1976. So it's an interactive time travel to a situation where 1378 kilometers separated Germany from Germany. It is an adaption of the series game Frontiers that I just presented, and it's also a half of two modifications, so based on a first person shooter. But in this case, my focus was on representing the dilemma of a border guard. You have to imagine that these border guards have they are German, of course, but they have to defend a border that is separating Germany from Germany. And they have to shoot, there was an order to shoot people that want to flee from Germany to Germany. That's a kind of very weird situation and I wanted to, to transfer this feeling into a game. And with it I wanted to, to interest a young generation to the topic because, like I know for myself, it is not, this topic is not handled in school right in that depth. So there must be some more education about. What I've done is I, I tried to trigger attention with uncommon gameplay. You have to imagine a first person shooter is a shooter where you have to shoot. Of course, you have to shoot to win. But in this game, if you shoot, you will lose. So it's kind of different. This is a map showing the former German border situation. You see, it's not just the Berlin Wall that separated Germany from Germany. It's a 1,378 kilometers long death strip. There are two teams, like in Frontiers, the refugees. They have to cross the border because they want to flee from the, from the former GDR. They got no weapons, and the other team is, are the border guards. They got weapons, and they have to protect the border. They are armed. There's an order to shoot. They got the ability to arrest, and in this special case, they also become a refugee by themselves. So this means it's, it's based on historical research that even border guards try to flee across the border. So there's a lot of possibilities how p players can interact with each other, or that both teams can in interact. They probably could all flee if they like to. But back to the order to shoot. The main thing, like I mentioned, is if you shoot, you will lose. And if you kill someone, get teleported in the year 2000 in front of a court of justice and have to spend there uh, some time. So if you shoot, if you do what is promised in a first person shooter, you will lose the game and you will be out of the game. Remember, only if you, you are only able to win when you do not shoot. It's the same thing like in Frontiers. There you also got the opportunity to arrest, so you can win the game without harm anybody. In addition, I want to show you some references. 
other games that handle about the topic of immigration. First example is Escape from Rumawa. It was developed in 2003 by an Australian professional game developers, media artists and journalists. And it, it handles about the Rumawa Immigration Reception and Processing Center. And you have to find your way in this center uh, with a lot of role-play game elements. It is based on Half-Life 1, so it's all, also a mod. And another great example. The next one I want to show you is also from Australia, called Asylum Exit Australia. It is developed by Chocolate Liberation Front, and it is an online simulation for SPS. And you have to find your way as a asylum seeker through bureaucracy and uh, corruption and justice. And you have to find a safe place for you and your family. And uh, you have to hide. And it's, uh, it's a good simulation game. Last but not least, I want to show you Against All Odds. It is developed by UNHCR. This game also lets you get some experience what it is like to be a refugee. So there are three different campaigns. It was developed in Sweden in the year 2005. The English version was released in 2007 and you play the role of a refugee all about 12 stages and it is from fleeing from your country get to try to get asylum and then if, you, if the asylum is granted how is your new life? So these three are very important projects that you have to know please and you have to play them. But let's have a few at what kind of results can appear. Like I mentioned in front here is there a lot of human rights organization that support us, like Amnesty International, or Borderline Europe is a big fan of the project. They say something like they they like to see how how game can reach people that this kind of organization wouldn't reach. I'm talking about young young generation that, that is grown up with, with computer games and in this special case with first-person shooters. So you get people interested in the topic that that are not directly involved. So they probably heard about it, but then they see, oh, okay, there's a cool, there's a mod for a game. Just download it, have a look at it, and getting in touch with the topic in a in a playful way. And Frontis is also shown at several festivals and museums around the world. It was. 2009 part of the Games for Change Festival in New York. It was um, part of the Art Moscow. Frontiers also got, got good media resonance. So in this special kind of, there were all, all, always good articles about the game. People like to see that something happens, you know, to reach a young generation, that there's an exchange between the medium and the generation. The completely other side happened to 1,378 kilometers. The Yellow Press, the biggest newspaper here in Germany, the Bild Zeitung, it's like the Sun in the UK. They, they titled Revolting Death Strip as Killer Game. They told the people that you have to kill as many people as you can to beat the high score. That's the complete opposite of if you kill someone you will lose. They didn't get it right. So this sparked a huge controversy about this game and about the question if a game can handle this part of German history. And it was some kind of media scandal that, that sparked out in, in worldwide media attention. In Germany the most people said you can't do this like this. It's not right to do a game about this part of German history. From outside Germany, the reaction was some kind of, what, what kind of problem did the German have with their history? If a newspaper of this impact, we are talking here about the biggest newspaper in Europe, is talking 
that kind of shit that is just for beating the high score, even I would say you can't do it like this. But you have to know none of them ever played it before. But just that summarize all of it. I will tell you that you have to hack playful systems to increase awareness to controversial topics. Now you're probably asking why he's talking about hacking. What the fuck is he talking about? <laughs> yeah, it's about manipulating games to confrontate players with modified gameplay they do not expect. Like creating a first-person shooter, and if you shoot, you will lose. Within this, you can play some subversive information transfer. This helps understanding the context and get socially educated while people are playing. You have to know that the game provides interaction in changing situations and all of it in real time, so you never know what happens next, depending if you're making a multiplayer game that is only played by player versus player. You can put yourself in a refugee or border guard's place and learn and understand both sides. The key word for this is immersion. You have to challenge players to new perceptions and deliver them other points of view. And if you're doing this, please let the people create their own moral understanding. Don't put out the moral club and try to implement them your own understanding. Let them find out by themselves. And this all helps to understand the big topics of our time by putting them into games. And that is what I'm thinking about when I'm talking about hacking playful systems. I want to increase awareness to controversial topics like immigration. Thank you very much. That's all. If you like, you can find more information on my website www.elogs.com slash en for the English version or just leave it to enter the German version. There you find a lot of tons of links and pictures and videos that will deliver you more information about the mentioned projects. And there is the man himself, live on Skype. Hi Jens. Can you hear us Jens? Hello Jens. Yeah, hello. <laughs> okay, we're just going to open for questions now. Questions for Jens. Ah, I can see the audience. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hi Jens. And you'll need the mic, because you can't hear. Oh, up there. So, did the controversy around um, that second game end up being beneficial, or did it just wreck the experience that lots of people because they never got around to trying it? Can we just type it, please? Do <laughs> <laughs> you want to come and repeat the question? The connection is some kind of weird. Why don't you come down? Come down. <laughs> you can summarize. <laughs> Um, so all the controversy around your game, did that end up being beneficial in the long run because all the extra media it got, or did it end up leaving this dark cloud that tainted it? Yeah, that both sides of the matter. You have to know there's some serious um, right issues. I was uh, there was some death meanings against my person, so it was kind of not a really bad situation, but because of a lot of media attention, you can say also profits, because uh, in my aim was successfully uh, finished to just to get this topic in the mind of the people, so uh, 
whole Germany talked for a few days about about this topic they never talked before. So yeah, you can say it, it works. Any more questions? Yeah, one more. Hi, can you hear me? No. <laughs> Take the mic. Hi. Um, just a question about the subversive gameplay and kind of um, leading to transfer of information. Um, have you used that as other situations besides, I guess, social justice awareness type of games? So it just lagged a bit. Your second uh, phrase then. It's right, she'll come out, just hold me. Sorry, everybody. Uh, just a question about this subversive gameplay and that leading to transfer of information. Have you used that um, in other types of games besides social justice awareness games? Um, the subversive is, uh, is a bit complicated because you have to put some information into the game that are not in front, just presenting to the people, so it must become in some kind of the back. So it's just behind you. So just delivering information that is not presented in the foreground but is, is part of the background and comes in, uh, got some, if you play it, you will just get the information directly transferred. Into your, into your head, even if you don't know about it. So um, we just tested it in this kind of way in first-person shooters. We, I, I'm pretty sure that it works in all kind of genres. But um, yeah, I hope this. I hope I can answer your question right. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, I think that'll be it because we're running slightly behind time. So thank you very much, Jens, and thank everyone can give him a thank you. <laughs> Thank you.